What's up, everybody? Um, welcome to the ninth edition of Finish Race Podcast. I'm your host, Misha Glufio. Today, we have a very special guest, um, someone that you guys might be familiar with, someone I'm obviously very much familiar with. Um, he happens to be my brother, Elijah Glufio. Um, I just wanted him to come on here quickly and share a little bit of his story, a little bit of his journey, um, some of the things that he's had to endure and how important his faith has been connected um, to everything that he's done. So get my brother to come on here. Um, he's a former ORU standout, former, he recently played for the uh, Salt Lake City, uh, Utah Chaz G League team. And he's just a uh, even better person than he is a player. So um, as well, as you guys know, the name of the podcast is Finished the Race and we wanna give players all over the world a, a chance to share their faith, not only, not only to share their faith, but share their journey to encourage others that um, are currently running their race, right? So I think finishing the race, the reason why we chose this was because, you know, the race to wherever destination either any of you is going is a constant thing, right? And we're all trying to get to the finish line. And I think the more we have brothers and sisters that are encouraging one another, the better it will be. So I'm going to have my brother join on right now. Without further ado, get this going. <clears throat> So I'm just gonna request him and we'll get this going. <clears throat> What's up, bro? Elijah, how you doing? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing great. Um, currently seven hours ahead of you. Um, I know you have some some news that was actually released earlier today on social media. Um, I can see you with your shirt on. Um, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a bit. We'll get to that in a bit for sure. Um, you know, but yeah, Elijah, we just wanted to come. We want you to come on here and kind of speak a little bit about your journey leading up um, into your recent stint with the NBA G League Salt Lake City. And kind of share your, your, a little bit of your journey for the viewers. Um, this, you've been to the pinnacle to where a lot of players want to be at, you know, playing in NBA G League. That's one step, you know, closer to the, to the, you know, elusive NBA, which is, you know, yeah. players dream to get there. So if you can share a little bit of that. Um, first question I just want to ask you, Elijah, is, you know, you talk a little bit about, you know, first of all, being the youngest um, of four brothers, you know, in a family, um, not only that serves God, but a family also where, you know, you probably felt a lot of pressure, you know, to kind of, you know, live up to the um, uh, standards that your brothers had set before you. So can you, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, like um, being, uh, first of all, I'm, I'm happy that you, I'm happy and honored that you have me come on your podcast. Um, I appreciate it. You've been doing a hell of a job. Probably I don't tell you that enough as a younger brother, but you've been doing a great job and I appreciate you having me on. But to answer your question, uh yeah like i was the youngest of the family like growing up it was hard because um like my oldest brother Shadrach, everybody know like he he kind of you know he was like an early bloomer i was a late bloomer so like when i got into like middle school high school i felt like i had to fill fill, fill y'all's shoes like i felt like i had to be either, either better or do exactly what you guys are doing but i didn't have the at the athletic ability nor the skill or IQ to do that at the time. So felt a lot of pressure simply because the, because of my last name, everybody was assuming or thought that, oh, you should be this type of player. You should be like your brother. You should play this way or whatever. Or because like I didn't grow uh, at an early age. So like it's just um, a lot of people are like, oh, you may not be as good or you might not be able to play at this level. Really, I've, I've heard it all. I, so I had to deal with that growing up. I even had to deal with that even, like, early college. Like, it didn't stop. Um, it didn't stop even when I was in college. Like, I went through all the way through middle school, elementary school, high school. So the pressure was definitely there. I felt the pressure more around, like, high school, um, high school area, just because, like, I felt like that was the more the focal point of y'all's college career. When I was in high school, you was – senior year of college and he was killing uh Shadrach was um, at Wichita State leaving Wichita State going to the D League and made it to the Sweet 16 and all of the, or to the uh, final four excuse me 
and available as Eastern Tennessee State, killing over there, killing that D2 Arkansas Tech, and so many things that was just the ball was rolling for you guys. And me, I was just like, I didn't even have an offer yet, so I was just like, man. So that was that was that was what I faced as the youngest guy. No, definitely. And uh, for many of you guys don't know, obviously, you guys don't know the Lou Field brothers. There's Shadrach, uh, leader of the pack, and also myself. And you know, Benda goes well. And here we have Elijah. You know, the youngest of all of us. Um, you, you know, just like the story of, of Joseph, the Bible, the youngest always is usually the one filled with the most promise and with the most um, pressure. And I think we constantly try to push you, Elijah, to be the best. You know, we always had hopes of you get into the NBA and things like that. Not only that, because we knew that you deserved it and even more deservingly so some of the um, circumstances that you have faced in life. And I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, the first thing is you were going through junior college, you know, doing everything you were doing. Um, and uh, I remember the day we got a, we got a call uh, you know, that your heart had stopped. You, you had a heart situation um, that had delayed you and taking you out of basketball for, I believe, a year. So can you talk a little bit about the challenges of like that happening, the uncertainty of not being able to play or being able to play, and just how you were able to get past that? Uh, yeah, I dealt with a lot of stress. Uh, grow, uh, not growing up, it's dealt with a lot of stress in the past. Like I would say, four four years of my life in the past four years of my life dealt with a lot of stress. And coming into that year, which was I guess um, uh, the twenty, I believe it was going to be the twenty 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 one season at ORU. And it's funny enough, it was like after the, that crazy pandemic summer. And uh, for a lot of people who was watching our Instagram, like me and you were working out that whole entire summer. Like I was in the best shape possible. Like I've never been in that type of shape. And working out outside, you know, private gym sessions, working out our basement and all that stuff. So I was thinking like, you know what, this is going to be a great year. And I'm in the best shape possible. Coaches are seeing it and it's just looking good right now. Summer workouts and I got there early, get some extra work in. And they say, you know, I try to walk to, I'm walking outside and I just collapse out of nowhere. Hmm. And then they got to end up in the hospital, see my coach there, and I see the, you know, the doctor just talking about it. I, I can't really like understand what she's saying. I'm still, I think they put something in me or whatever. And so, you know, they diagnosed me with uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which is a heart condition. You know, I have, uh, uh, having a large heart is normal for athletes because we're bigger, especially for African Americans. It's not hereditary; it wasn't in the family, so it's something that uh, you know that I have. All right, so it's like, okay, what do I what do I got to do with this information? They said, in order for you to play basketball, you have to get this surgery. So like, I don't want to get this surgery. Like I don't want to. Like I've heard too many. I was actually scared to get the surgery. I'm like I don't want to do this. So I was rejecting. It. I was like, no, you know what? I'm gonna pray and trust God. He's gonna do something miraculous. And then, you know, as time went by, as time went by, I was, uh, you know, nothing was happening. It was just like delay after delay after delay. And then a the whole year went by, um, didn't play. We went to the Sweet 16, won conference championship. I was blessed uh, blessed to experience, uh, you know, the, the I guess the, the making of Max Acemus, who's currently still at ORU, Kevin O'Banners at Texas Tech, and see them bring the school to uh, somewhere they haven't been to in like 14 years. So I was able to witness that. But in that, I was like, man, like we won the conference championship. I ain't feel like I even done nothing. Like, I ain't feel like, what's this, well, I got this ring. I ain't do nothing. I may have like give them advice on the court and be there physically there and help them and this, this and that. And I'm like, oh, like, this is whack. At the end of the day, I'm a competitor. You feel me? Like I want to be on the court. So miss me all that, you know, all that encouragement, this, that. I, I was staying encouraged, like, all that, like, I was doing that, like, just for the, I guess for everybody else to say, because I didn't want them thinking, oh, he's depressed, he said, nah, like, I, I put on the right attitude, but internally, I was destroyed. Uh, also going through other issues as well, um, like, I was, I was outside the court, outside of basketball, so I was just trying to balance those, it was really hard, I'm um, not gonna lie, and it was, I think it was, um, Definitely tested my faith uh, a little, not a lot of it, but a lot. So, um, yeah. You mentioned um, that it, it was definitely testing your faith, which is something I think, you know, the Bible talks about the faith of a mustard seed. And, like, if you really understand what a mustard seed is and how small it is, 
you know, in comparison, you know, having, God is basically telling us, you know, like, that if we even have the faith of a mustard seed, so even a little bit of faith that he can, we'll be able to move mountains, and he's able to move those mountains for us. And I remember that NCAA run that ORU had went on, and they were knocking off some giants in the tournament. I remember uh, myself, you, CJ, I don't know if Abena was here, and we were watching the games actually on TV. And, you know, I remember turning my head at one point and kind of seeing um, your reaction to your team, and you could see the excitement, but you could also see, like, you know, kind of like the regret of not being able to be there with them, to play with them, to compete. And they, they definitely missed their size. I, I thought they could have continued to keep going further if they had your size. But, you know, all of that happened um, with everything. And this and leads me to my next question. Um, when you spoke about your faith being tested, can you talk a little bit about that? Obviously, being the, the son of a pastor, uh, Pastor Benjamin Lufio, um, how has your faith played a role in your career, in, 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 in your sports, in your now pro career? How has your faith kind of kept you stable, you know, through every storm that you've had to face? I'm only where I'm, – I'm, I'm where I am because of God. Like, seriously, um, I didn't even – a lot of people don't even know this. Like, I didn't even finish like, – I didn't even graduate from high school the way everybody else did. I, I just I, – you know, I just didn't finish high school the way I should have. I – I wasn't taking it seriously, and then, you know, I got dismissed from school. Like, I, they call it, like, de-enroll you because I wasn't taking it seriously. Then it was like, okay, I, like, I don't have a, uh, a high school diploma. What am I going to do? So I had to get my GED. Just like, I'm just 18-year-old getting his GED. Like, that's crazy. But I had to do what I had to do at the end of the day in order to be able to play college basketball wherever. Whether it was in Canada, the U.S., you know. I had I had to like at least get that, so I got it, um, and that was God in itself. Because I, like even now, like I went through I went through trials and tribulations even when I was in high school to get um to get a high school diploma, to get into junior college, to get noticed by other Division one schools. Even in the mix of junior college, I was going going through health complications and all these other things. Um, and it was all God, it was all through prayer. Because so many things to get to where you, where a lot of people, to get to where I am now, like, you, um, it takes a lot of hard work, but not everybody who works hard, like, can really make it to where I am. Like, I was fortunate to play in the G League um, right out of school. Fortunate to play um, where I currently am right now uh, in Canada, playing for the CBL. Like, it's just, there's a lot of people that really don't get the opportunity to, to get where I am. You know, and, and it was only through prayer and faith. And, like, the way the devil has attacked me, like, my, my mental health, my physical health, in ways that, like, I never would have anticipated, never would have thought I'll go through these things. Like, I was, I had a lot of doubts about myself. Um, I even questioned God. I'm like, how are you going to let this happen? Um, you claim that you, you know, created me for, a purpose that like you have a purpose in my life, but like all these things are happening, it just seems like it is impossible to like get over these obstacles. Why am I going through this? I question myself every day. Went through a lot of depression, and I, was, I felt like it was, I was really too young to be going through depression. But like it's, it is what it is, right? Like, and then I'm just like, you know. But because of my dad being the man that he is and everything that he's faced in his life and his upbringing, um, just praying with him, my brothers course my sister uh, always my grandmother always praying for my, my mom when she was alive at the time always praying praying and then like a lot of people do not understand that prayer works but you mm -hmm. need to literally but you also have to believe believe that god has a plan for you that god's going to take care of everything take care of the rest and i was reading the book of jeremiah how god god had to literally remind jeremiah three times and be like listen do not be afraid. I will be with you. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah being scared again, and this, this, and that. Oh man, my family, they, they're talking about me. How am I going to preach the truth? How am I going to preach to the Israelites and tell them to repent? How am I going to do that? They're clowning me, this, this, and that. Like God's going to tell them again, do not be afraid. I will be with you. So I just like, I took that and ran with it, and everything that I went through, I took it with the grain of salt, and it's always. Uh, you know, made me stronger. Like every situation I went through, I was like, I became stronger. And I was like, now nah, I go through situations, I'm like, say nothing. I've been through something. I've been through worse. So, wow, that's powerful, man. And you know, 
the Bible says that many are called and few are chosen, right? And I've I've used these examples so many different times. I've used the example of Joseph. I've used the example of David, you know, and, you know, even Moses, right? You know, the promise of some of these, these, these children who grew up and, you know, seeing, you know, David in, in the fields as a, as a shepherd and, and him having the faith in a God that was mightier than Goliath, right? And him being crowned king and everything that came with it. And I think as, as, as Christians and athletes especially, we don't realize that, you know, the Bible tells us that tribulations will happen, like trials will come, but also that he that endureth till the end shall be saved. And I think, you know, having Christ as that firm foundation is so important because it's able to keep you rooted. And as you told, you, you explained earlier, like you went through the heart failure, you know, you were found passed out. Right. I remember, the, I guess we were getting the phone call and like we were all in tears and you went through so many different things with your school and you dealt with weight problems and you dealt with mental problems. And most importantly, you dealt with the pressure of being a younger, um, the youngest in the family, you know, a family of all brothers that play professionally. And um, the next question I want to ask you um, is, and I think a lot of people will be able to relate to this, especially athletes and maybe people are dealing with it now. Obviously, we lost we lost my mother in, in 2021. Um, I know personally how I dealt with it. I know personally how I was able to, you know, overcome. I thank God, but I also thank my wife as well. She was like, she was a rock for me through all of this. Um, being the youngest, and I also know how close you were to her, how did that affect you? And how were you able to take that and kind of trampoline yourself to a level? Because a lot of people, when they deal with loss, you know, they... They, they go towards suicide, they go towards depression, they go to alcoholism, so many different things that the world tries to give us, right? Quick fixes, but it's never anything that's able to sustain us. So how were you able to sustain yourself and end up on the grand stage um, of the NBA G League? Um, it's hard, I mean, I don't even talk about my mom that much because it's like, I mean, it's too much, like, honestly, it's just too much to this day, it's like, Still get emotional, but um, you know, shout out to moms. I got a necklace here for her, right there. But you know, yeah, we was all close to moms. You know, she did everything. She was the matriarch of the family. Uh, I've never seen a woman pretty like that. Take care of her kids, go to work, come back. Uh, take care of her man. Like you know, we're African, so like it, it, it's just like you don't find a lot of women like that <laughs> today. You know, she was built different. We all know that. Um, positive just like you know so much I can say about her but how I dealt with it was horrible uh, I think I, I could I, I didn't even have time to process it simply because in that year there's so much turnaround like I I graduated you know thank god I, I graduated university but then I had to go home you know I only had seven days to really see her and not even her be like she was, she was not a week, you know, it was like a coma, like she was, she was not responsive. So those seven days where I spent with her, you know, it was a blessing, but you know, she passed. But then um, I was angry. I was mad at God. I was really angry. And I just didn't, I, I, I didn't want to take part in any, like any of the, anything else that had to do with God. I'm not gonna lie. I wanted to live my life. And the, the direction I was headed really was, was, was going to be a serious disaster. Um, and I did not handle it well. I remember like just you know, drinking a lot of alcohol, doing a lot of things that uh, I wouldn't do as a person of faith. Um, it goes against everything that God, what God stands for, against all his commandments. I probably broke all 10 commandments, honestly speaking, like that, that summer went long past. And I was depressed, I was angry, I was, uh, I would lash out I was very emotional, suicidal. Um, then I went to, I remember I went going back to ORU, working out. Great, uh, great, great uh, spiritual-based uh, environment because I, a lot of people knew and they were always praying for me and coaches always checking on me. But um, had to, I went straight to having my surgery right after. So, like, it just was too much going on. There's too much turnaround. Like I'm like, 
Oh, this is wild. Like, I'm about to have heart surgery. And then mom was just passed. And then, like, I'm gaining all this weight. You know what I'm saying? And even when I'm playing basketball, like, I'm playing, even when I got clear, like, I'm not even playing. So I'm sitting there like, oh, this is a waste of time. I should quit. As a matter of fact, uh, coming after, you know, the two weeks after the funeral, I went and did this children's camp at the school. And I remember, I remember I stepped out of the camp for a little bit and I called, I called dad. I'm like, man, I'm done. I quit. I don't want to do this no more. Like, I'm done with basketball. I quit. Hold on. Book my flight. We out. And I was like, listen, you need to pray, sleep on it. If that's what you want to do, you're a grown man. I'm not going to tell you what to do. You know yourself best and do it. I called my assistant coach, Coach uh, Solomon Bozeman. He's now at UAP, UAPB in Arkansas. At the, like at the time, I didn't want to call any, any of my coaches on staff and make them, you know, feel any type of, you know. So I called somebody who wasn't on that staff. He had just took the job. I called my coach. I'm about it. I'm about it. I'm, I'm done. I don't want to do this no more. Like this is over with. It's moms, sir. Like I'm, I'm through. It's, just, it's just too much. No, like no human being should have to go through this. It's like this. You need to pray about it. Sleep on it. So it's, it's, it's the exact same thing my dad said. All right, man. Prayed on it. Trust to God. Woke up the next morning. I went through it. The next week, I had the surgery, did all that, uh, recovered over the 12, 12 weeks, and then just kept on going. That that was the moment where I said, you know, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up because my mom never gave up on me when, uh, when she had to wake up at 5 a.m. in the morning. And I was sick and I was throwing up. Or she had to do this. She had to lead a prayer conference and um, at 5 a.m. in the morning because everybody in Congo, it's like an eight-hour difference. Uh, she never had to give. She never gave up when we all came home from school. She still had to cook after she came off a twelve-hour shift. Uh, she never gave up on this, this, that, and the third, like, and so much more. So I was like, "Who am I to quit and just play basketball for free?" At the end of the day, why am I? All that went into my mind as soon as I made that decision. And uh, till this day, I hear her voice. When when someone does something to me, like my reaction is always to retaliate or to say something back. And the Bible says, like, turn the other, give him the other cheek, or do not turn material evil to evil. But one thing that helps is like I hear her voice always saying, "Forgive, just forgive him. Your brother do something to you, just forgive him. Your sister do something, just forgive him." You know, my mom, mom used to say that like, "Just forgive him, mm. just forgive him." Like, so um, she's left that everything who she was. She's left that here. She's left a legacy here. Um, she's definitely, and you know, we have a thing called the Philly Legacy. Like, she's part of that. She's left mm. that legacy within us. So. Dealt with it in a horrible way, but in the long run, um, I was able to come out of that, you know, depression stage, I guess, grieving stage, um, by the grace of God, honestly. It was through prayer, miracle, but yeah, so. No, that's powerful, just seeing how you coped. And I think for me personally, um, I was always a strong kid. Like you mentioned, we spoke earlier about, like, I was probably the last one to cry. When, when we lost mom and, you know, my biggest worry was, one of the pe people I was worried about was, was was with you. And obviously people, you know, look at you, Elijah's a big kid, strong kid, whatever. But as an older brother, he's, he's still the little brother. So there was always that there. So it's, a, it's amazing to see how you were able to kind of take all of that, you know, tragedy that had happened in your life and end up playing um, on one of the biggest stages in the world, which is the NBA G League. Um, you recently had some fantastic performances um, at the NBA G League Showcase. And um, to announce, if you guys already know, Elijah has actually signed a contract for the third window of the CEBL, which is the Canadian Elite Basketball League, BCLAs, as you can see with the shirt there. So you will be participating in the, in the third window. They will be playing in Brampton, I believe, this weekend. Um, so if you guys are in Canada and you want a chance to go see Elijah and the rest of the Canadians play, definitely make sure you guys make your way out there. And, um, you know, closer to ending, Elijah, before I ask the final question, um, I just want to say, like, you know, as your older brother, how proud I am of you to see you overcome and kind of get to a level where we all dreamed of. We all know CJ was able to play at the with the Sky Force in the G League before he had injured himself. Um, and, you know, Benigo has played play professional last year, winning – uh, championship uh, with the London Lightning and my, myself, I'm currently in Romania, you know, in the mountains and, and yourself signing this contract. It's amazing to see how God is, uh, has been able to work 
in all of our lives and in your life especially. And I believe that God's going to continue to bless you and open up more doors for you because as the people here can see, Elijah's a man full of wisdom. He loves the Lord. He loves people. He has a heart for people. Um, one of the biggest givers I've ever met in my life. And, and I'm just praying that over you. And then the last um, last question I want to ask you, Elijah, is, and I always ask my guests this, what would you tell the younger Elijah if you were to sit in front of him today and you were to speak to him and you were to ask you, like, Elijah, like, tell me, like, what can I expect? What should I do? What would you tell your younger self today? There's so many things I would say, but honestly, the, number, the one and only thing I would say is obey your parents. Mm. Um, but yeah. I would say if you obey your parents, you would live longer. Mm. And your blessings come from your parents. If you're not pleasing, first of all, if you're not pleasing your parents, you're not pleasing God. God gave us these parents for a reason. If we're, at times, adolescence years, you're rebellious towards your parents, and I guess it's a growing stage and all these other things. But there's also a I used to be like, oh, it's normal, whatever. But I, you know, getting deeper in my faith and understanding the spiritual aspect of things, that certain things are not normal and it's not of God. Uh, behaviors, um, it's not of God. And I don't want people to get it misconstrued and be like, you know what, it's a stage in life. You know, it's, it's a stage. Like, there's so many stages in life. And then I'm not going to get into that because, you know, we live in a sensitive world nowadays. But there's so many things that people say it's a phase in life. Mm -hmm. It's not a phase. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a spiritual thing behind it. It's the mind. So um, that's one thing. Uh, obey your parents and, 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 and continue to pursue God. You put those things together. You know, like I, my favorite verse is, is Jeremiah 29, verse 11. It says, God uh, says, for I have, for I know the plans that I have for you is plans to prosper you, not harm you. And uh, God already has a plan for us. He told Jeremiah, I knew you before, before you were in the womb. So that means he knew him before he was even conceived. He had a plan for him. Before his parents came together, and he already had a plan for him. So, like, um, all that God has always orchestrated and organized, all that stuff before we even, like, and the more I think about that, I was like, man, like, so everything I'm going through is actually, like, there's a reason for it. There's a purpose behind it. I'm writing my story. You know, my testimony is going to be really big. All of us have a testimony. The thing is, the only way we're going to share that testimony is honestly, if we continue to turn to God, obey God, and listen to God, and trust in Him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's just like all that stuff that you're going through it ain't nothing. Like, it's nothing. The Bible mm -hmm. says we're more than conquerors. God is for us. We can stand against, against us. We need to start having that mentality uh, for the people who are watching this, and for the people who are going to watch this later on. You need to start having that mentality and trusting God because there's nothing um, that you have went through, there's no emotion that you are feeling, there's no anything that Jesus Christ who was on earth hasn't felt. And he went through temptation, the devil tempted him three times, right? I want to tell you for people, when you get tempted, the Bible says, yeah, the devil will flee, but he's not going to go forever, he's going to come back. Even It said, uh, Satan flee from Jesus, but he's going to come back at an opportune time. He's always going to come back, but how? it's about how you respond. So every situation you go in your life, it's about how you respond and how you attack that situation. Are you going to respond in a negative way or in a positive way? Are you going to res respond by scripture, by trusting God through prayer? Your number one weapon should be prayer. The Bible says our weapons, our warfare are not carnal. So don't look at the things, don't look first at the things of this world to bring you happiness, and, uh, this, this, and that. You know, look to God. Uh, and, and, and yeah, so I, mean, I can go on and on. But like the number one thing is just focus and, and on God and, and listen to your friends. So. Hmm. Wow. Well, you guys can clearly see I'm not the only preacher in, in the family. I think, I think Elijah has a little bit of it, too. He probably... He probably I'm not doing, I, ain't, I ain't doing all that. Man. But <laughs> it's, in all of our, it's in all of our blood. Uh, Elijah, thank you, man. Um, thank you so much for taking the time to speak. I know it was pretty fast, but I think you shared a lot of beautiful gems um, for the younger generation, especially as you continue to grow and get older. Um, you're going to be more and more of an influence, right? And you're going to be a deterrent to the kingdom of darkness because the Bible says that the whole world lies in darkness, right? And we need the light. We need, we, need, we need people to be a light in this world. We need people to show love, the love of Christ through us, right? Absolutely. And the Bible says you shall know them by their fruits. So your fruits are showing. And through the fruits, you are enjoying the fruits of your labor, right? It's showing. And 
I just want to say thank you for taking the time to sit on here. Thank you for taking the time to um, come in here and share a bit of your testimony. Um, the last thing I wanted to ask you real quick, you just answer real quick. Um, the podcast is called Finish the Race Podcast. So I've never asked a guest this, but I want to ask you for the first time, what does that mean to you? Finish the race. Finish the race. I'm still, I'm still running my race. I know. Mm. I'm still running my race. So I feel like, man, for the time I'm on this earth, like, I don't, I don't think my race will end until I am, like, in the presence of God, honestly speaking. Like, this race is going to continue from my time on earth. I, I leave this earth at 50. 28, 30, or 87, or 95, it don't matter what age. Um, my, race is gonna, my race will continue. This marathon continues. It will continue. Uh, so I feel like the time on earth, uh, with everything, the blueprint that God has given us, which is through the word of God, how we're supposed to live uh, as righteous people, that is our race that we need to use in life because the devil's going to throw so much at us and all the obstacles and situations we're going to go through uh, is is uh, we're going to be well equipped with that. And how we're going, like I said, how you respond to it is very important. So when you use those tools that God has given us, um, then your race will. I'm not going to say it's going to be easy, but there's going to be a weight lifted off your shoulder, and that weight that has been lifted up is carried by God, Jesus Himself. He's going to carry that, and you knowing that makes you even stronger and mightier. Mm. So my race. Finish the race is, it, to me, that, that's basically what it means. It's, 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 it's me being well-equipped for everything that I face in my life, well-equipped by Jesus himself and his word that he's given us and to us and that is in us um, and, and, and doing everything he says while I'm on this earth and listening and obeying him, doing his work and spreading the gospel and then until I am at the throne of grace. So that's what it means to me. Amen, amen, amen. That's very powerful. That actually spoke to me a lot, everything you said. Um, Elijah, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate you. I'm sure the people here were blessed. Again, if you are in Canada and you are in the GTA region, Elijah will be playing for the Brampton Honey Badgers of the CEBL, Canadian League Basketball League. They will be playing here in Brampton over the weekend. Come check out Elijah play some amazing professional um, competition. If you want to get details on it, if you guys want to DM Elijah, you can. I'm going to give a shout out. I want to give a shout out to Zero Doubt, my brother. He got a Zero Doubt camp, kids camp in uh, Milton, Ontario. Y'all check it out. Get your kids to go. Uh, shout out to also my brother here. And continue to watch his podcast. He's doing big things overseas right now. Has a wonderful wife there taking care of him. Uh, shout out to my sister. Shout out to my dad who hold it down. Shout out to our prophet of Benigo Lufile. I need to watch his uh, TikToks and lives and everything. For you guys who are seeking God, who want something, who want, who want to be renewed, who want to be restored, who need Jesus in your life, and you just don't know where to go, uh, he is somebody who's well equipped in that area of deliverance and all these other things. Uh, you can go elsewhere. This is just my suggestion. I just want to shout out to that. To that. Yeah, there we go. And the forgotten one, shout out my sister too. Yeah, yeah shout out my sister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. she be doing and all that woman stuff. Hit her up. You know what I'm saying? Is the she has my mother's heart and prayer. She's the one that keeps everything solid. So, Elijah, thank you so much. Thank you for the viewers that viewed in um, this. As you guys know, protocol. It will be posted. Uh, I will clip it up a bit and find some areas. Um, like I said, if you want to see Elijah play this weekend in Brampton for the uh, CBL Basketball Champions League Americas, check out Elijah in Brampton. Send him a message. Follow him on Instagram. Follow his journey. Because as I said, Elijah is still running his race, and his race will be finished, as he said, when he's at the throne of grace. Finishing right. race at the throne of grace. Awesome. God bless you, Elijah. Thank you. Appreciate you, man. God bless. God bless. Thank you guys for joining in on episode nine of Finish the Race podcast. You can find us here. Um, make sure you give us a follow. Make sure you follow Elijah, follow his career. Make sure you check out some of our other videos. Um, we are here to encourage, share the, the testimonies um, of athletes around the world and their faith and how everything has been going on. And uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone that tuned in, that listened. I hope you guys were blessed and hope you guys were edified. Love you guys. God bless you guys. And hope you guys are doing well. Take care.